One of South America's biggest highlights is Iguazu Falls. Located on the border of Brazil and Argentina, the Iguazu River has waterfalls that has earned it the title of one of the seven wonders of the natural world. Waterfalls, Misiones, Argentina. The Iwasu Falls are found at 25 degrees south and 55 degrees west. The mild characterism of a maritime climate. Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, a Spanish governor from Santa Catalina on the Brazilian Atlantic coast to us in Santa Maria to Vives Falls, but the Guarani name for great waters, E, water, Wasu, great, finally remains. the mysteries of the universe seem to meet. I'm Mark Lewis from Houston, Texas, and we're mighty proud to have George here to uh, be our guide here at Iguazu Falls, and now we're over here at the Argentine side, and uh, it is very, very beautiful. It's hard to tell which side is really the best side, but uh, it's a joy to be here. We're having a great time here at Iguazu. Really spectacular place. George, you should say something, George. Well, uh, Mark, that pleasant being with you here in Iguazu. Uh, uh, I hope in the future you might come back. It's always you come back. I want to just say that you are always welcome. Oh, thank you very much. If very you bad. have your colleagues, your relatives, whatever, friends, you send them down here. Down here, they're not going to be disappointed. We're going to be back at Iguazu Ball. This is really great. Thanks so much. Jeanette and I thought it was great fun to ride horses with the gauchos. 
How many people get a chance to do that? It was like uh, riding on a dude ranch in Texas, only better. One of the most memorable cruises we've taken was around the southern coast of South America from Chile to Argentina on the Norwegian Crown. As the pilots circled over Sydney, Australia, Australia's largest city, we saw its beautiful harbor and we could see the Sydney landmark, the Sydney Opera House, and the famous Sydney Bridge, known to the locals as the Coat Hanger. We made a stop at Mrs. Macquarie's Point for a group photo so that we could have the famous Opera House in the background. The Opera House is called the Wonder Down Under. We went there for a performance of the Mikado. The Opera House took 14 years to build and cost $102 million. It was dedicated by Queen Elizabeth in 1973. We ended the day at table at the famed Doyle Seafood Restaurant. Leaving the Great Barrier Reef, my tour group took a plane to the Australian Outback to see Ayers Rock. The huge formation is sacred to the Aboriginals. It lies 208 miles southwest of the nearest town, Alice Springs. We watched the early sunrise at the rock, and the place was just magical. It glows red at dawn and at sunset. The rock itself is extremely high, 1,142 feet high, and it's five miles in circumference. The aboriginals call it Uluru, which means Island Mountain. I did manage to climb halfway up to the top, and I got a certificate for my effort. Meanwhile, Jeanette was down below taking pictures. We will long remember being in the dead center of that isolated area of Australia called the Outback, land of the kangaroos and Ayers Rock, and koala bears. New Zealand is an island country in the southwest Pacific Ocean, composed of a north and south island. It is 900 miles east of Australia. Jeanette and I visited here three times over the years. We always stopped in Auckland, New Zealand, New Zealand's largest city of one million inhabitants. Most of our travel across the years was overseas, but in retirement years, we discovered a fantastic treasure in our trip to Lake Michigan and the historic Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island. The beautiful and historic hotel was built in July 1887 and has the longest colonial porch in the world. It is known as the world's largest summer hotel. You have to see it to believe it. It has that wow factor. Here we are on the hotel's long veranda in their famed white rocking chairs. There are no cars allowed on the island. You can walk, ride bikes, or ride horse-drawn carriages. That's it. One of the highlights of Mackinac Island is dinner at the Grand Hotel. The price was $65 a plate. Well, you only live once, so we up and did it. It was great. Of course, we had to sample the famous Mackinac fudge. We ended our stay with a carriage ride and later took a group there to share that unique experience on Mackinac Island. One of the best cruises in America was the paddle wheel cruise on America's Columbia and Snake Rivers. You travel in the footsteps of Lewis and Clark, who opened up the West with their journey from St. Louis to the West Coast of America. We ended our cruise tour with a tour of Fort Clapsop, the winter headquarters of Lewis and Clark. 
Am I related to the famous Meriwether Lewis? I'd like to think so. Over the years, Jeanette and I had the privilege of making two cruises to Alaska. The first cruise was on the Crown Princess in September. Our second cruise was on the Six Star Crystal Harmony. We cruised up Alaska's Inward Passage to Anchorage and then went by train to Denali Park, heading north for Fairbanks, Alaska. We stayed at the luxurious Denali Park Lodge and enjoyed the mountain scenery. Here's a photo I took of one of our Alaskan guides. At Ketchikan, we found ourselves in the salmon capital of the world. It is also the fourth largest city in Alaska. Another interesting port of call on our Alaska cruise was Skagway, Alaska and its Gold Rush Museum. Jeanette posed for the camera with one of Alaska's famous bear rugs. Off the coast of Haiti is Labadee Island. One of our cruise ship tours uh, made a stop there, and at the age of 79, I made my first zip line uh, ride 400 feet above the bay. Boy, that was fun. In November 2013, during the Thanksgiving season, Jeanette and I took the family on a one-week cruise of the Caribbean on the beautiful Caribbean Princess. On the cruise, we celebrated our 57th wedding anniversary. And my 85th birthday. Jeanette called the cruise our last hurrah. What a fun trip it was.